Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're a new, hello, my name is Sarah and I'm so glad that you clicked on today's video. I tried to film this video three times and every time I keep messing up the intro. So this time we're just gonna send it and work through it and just deal with what we got. So if you are new, I have been a part-time nanny for the past four years and I just wanted to make this video as like a big sister video, give you some advice and stuff like that if you were trying to get started with being a nanny or a babysitter and explain some of the differences between the two. So I've always been interested in kids. As some of you may know, I'm an elementary education major and I just always loved kids. I loved the developmental aspect of it and I always knew that whatever I did was going to have to do with kids. So I was a camp counselor for four summers in a row. I I mean, actually, I was a camp counselor before that, too. I've been a camp counselor for a long time. I've been a babysitter, a mother's helper, and a nanny. And I think it's, like, a very common job that a lot of teenagers look to get. It's easy, it's fun, and obviously, like, nice to make some cash, right? So, yeah, I started to be... I started being a nanny when I was around 18, so before that, I was just babysitting and doing mother's helper stuff. And when I was that old, I just put my name out there. I told my mom to like put her, give her my name out to friends or people she knew that had kids in our neighborhood. If you are in a neighborhood with a lot of kids, that's a big bonus. I am not in a neighborhood with a lot of kids, but for those of you who are, that's a big bonus for you. Just putting your name on the listservs, on the group pages, Facebook pages, any of that stuff can really help get your name out there and build your clients. If you're just, just planning on being a babysitter, that's occasional ba babysitting, you know, like whatever, when they have an appointment or they want to go on a date, stuff like that, then, you know, you want to build enough clients for that to be sustain sustainable for you to have like that be your job because one family going on one or two day nights a month is obviously not going to cut it. For reference, I live in the DC suburbs right outside of DC in Maryland. And so I've worked mostly in Maryland and I just started working in DC. Uh, it's really not that different, but just so you guys know for prices and stuff like that. So the differences between a babysitter, a nanny, and a mother's helper is sometimes confusing for some people. And I've actually worked for multiple moms who treated me like a babysitter when I was actually their nanny and it was very frustrating. So I just wanna put it out there so that you guys can advocate for yourself the differences between the three. A mother's helper is when you are helping the mother with daily chores. You are her extra set of hands. Think about it as like her husband's at work and she needs a husband while her husband's at work. So you might, she'll give you a task and you'll go do it while she takes care of another kid. Or, you know, most of the time it means she's at home, maybe doing other things like washing the dishes while you're playing with the baby. But she's always there. Most of the time she's in the room with you and you're just tag teaming to get the kids ready for bed or breakfast, like get stuff done, whatever. But she's almost always there. And for that, you'll be paid a lot less than you will be for nannying and babysitting. But Mother's Helper is a great way to get started, especially if you're on the younger side, because a lot of moms are more comfortable letting younger kids be their mother's helper since they'll be home the entire time. Babysitting is occasional date nights, appointments, stuff like that. Maybe the mom has a doctor's appointment, you'll go watch the kid for three or four hours. There's not a lot of expected stuff, you know, like keep the kid alive, feed them, water them, that type of stuff, but you're not really, you're not gonna normally be asked to do the dishes or the laundry or anything like that. You could be their one and only babysitter. I am the primary babysitter for two families, but I'm only called on once a week if that so that's obviously not a sustainable and it's only for two or three maybe four hours so it's not obviously that sustainable um if that's what you're gonna do for like two families but if you have a lot of families i know during covid it might be a bit harder but i'd recommend that for you know maybe 15 year olds plus because that does require you staying at home alone by yourself with the kid and i know a lot of parents prefer that you have your license because I used to be a babysitter before I had my license and the mom would have to drive me home after and that's sometimes a big like deterrent for some moms because when they get home from the date night or the event or whatever they just want to like be done with it not drive you home so I would recommend maybe wait until you have your own transportation for that. A nanny is a much bigger job you are a caregiver for that child and normally you stay with them for many many years. I have been a nanny to a three and a half year old now for three and a half years so i've been with her her whole life she knows me and I, there's a lot more responsibilities with that i have a car seat for her in my car i pick her up from daycare i'm on her emergency contact list at daycare i take her home i feed her dinner i give her a bath i put her to bed um it's a lot more involved obviously i'm you know 
I help her mom discipline her when it needs to be done, which, you know, three-year-olds are kind of difficult. So she has her moments, but she's really good. Um, you know, her mom will, I'll take her out and do stuff, maybe go to the zoo, the aquarium. We go out and do events together. So that is kind of an example of what a nanny would be. You're also called on to do laundry for the kid, dishes for the kid, that's expected. Um, I mean, if they say it's expected. And that I really would wait until you're, you know, ready to take on that bigger role because it is a lot of responsibility. So how to get started. First of all, I would recommend getting babysitter certified and CPR certified. That is something that like, you don't really have to do, but it always puts the parents like at ease to know that stuff. You can get it done through American Red Cross. You do have to pay for it, but it, again, it's like a day long class. It wasn't that hard. A lot of the stuff you already probably will know, but if you say, hey, I'm American Red Cross certified, a mom might really like that because again, you are being trusted with their most precious prized possession and you wouldn't want anything bad to happen. I mean, at the least, I would recommend getting CPR certified in infant and children. It is different for the infant and children than adults. And that is something that you most definitely need to know because I have been in situations like that and I could not imagine not knowing what to do because I'm already so flustered even though I already know what to do. I would put your face, your name in Facebook groups and hot tip, put yourself in Facebook groups with like in the richer parts of town. I know that sounds whatever it sounds, but at the end of the day, it is a job and they are willing to pay you more. And if you can drive the extra little bit, it's worth it. I mean, my specific city is pretty expensive in itself, but even if I go two or three cities over, that's 15 minutes away, I could be paid a lot more. So I would recommend doing that and just put a bio about yourself. You can put pictures of yourself with kids. Um, if you are if you don't have permission to post the face of the kid i would put like a sticker over their face just so like they get an idea of who you are and put in your skills like are you organized are you timely are you you know easy to communicate with all that stuff hype yourself up do all the things think of it as like applying to college when you're looking for a roommate in the facebook group like you want to you know show your best features so if you've been a camp counselor before or anything like that put it all in there and a lot of times that helps you get a job the more information you put be transparent with your rates and your hours don't say oh i'm flexible with times and then go back on it once you have like someone who wants you to work for them be clear if you don't want to work on weekends say that if you don't want to be paid under a certain amount say that make your expectations very clear because I'll go into this later, but I've been in situations where I thought I was clear and I obviously wasn't and the relationship falled and crumbled. So be transparent and don't be fake though. Like be who you are and don't say anything that's not actually true about yourself because they'll find out eventually. So setting a price is difficult. I know that because I have trouble with that. You are your own boss and if you are someone who's a people pleaser, social anxiety, all the things me um you're gonna have a lot of trouble with people walking on you if you don't just set you know set a price set your rules what you want to happen you can even have a contract with your paid time off the benefits you want all that stuff i'll get into that in a second but um that is a different type of nanny i would say than what i do but yeah be clear have a contract maybe be clear with the parents with what you want and ask them to be transparent with you because that's always the biggest thing. You don't want anything to be left unsaid and then end up being very resentful. So in my area, the median price, like the starting price is $15 for a nanny and a babysitter. I think that's a little bit low based on what I've seen in the area, but just check on your, you know, like on your Facebook groups, on the internet, what's a reasonable price. Price yourself in the middle. You know, if people can't pay your price, then they'll tell you. But don't make your price smaller because you think someone wants that for you. I've done that in the past, and honestly, it doesn't do anybody any just. It doesn't help anybody. Literally nobody. As a babysitter for date nights, I charge 15 to 18 an hour. That's very fair. And of course, you should charge $1 to $2 more per child. Do with what you want with that information, but that's normally what you would do. Um... A nanny is a lot more expensive because you are paying them to do laundry and be very much more involved in you know your kid's life than a babysitter would be. Um, I'm paid $25 an hour with one family that I work for and 18 with another and I'm comfortable with both of those prices. 
the reason that I'm paid differently for each, you might ask, is because the woman who I work for that pays me 25 an hour, that was a deal we set up a long time ago. She made the price, she set the price. I did not expect anything near that. When I first started her with her, I made 20 an hour and I got a raise for a $5 raise. Um, the family I work for now, I get paid 18. I told them that was my rate. I'm comfortable with that. Um, they asked me multiple times if I was comfortable with that. Um, and I said, yes, I think it's a fair price for what I do. And if I ever felt that I wanted a raise, then they would give it to me. Um, we have talked about it before. It's an open line of communication and I think that's how it always should be. So my biggest advice for you is to set boundaries because as a nanny, you are a part of the family. You're a, th you're a third or second adult and you really are an integral part of that child's life and you just have to set boundaries. You're not there to be their friend. You're not there to have drinks with them, have dinner with them, to gossip with. You are there for the children and that's how it should be. You might think I'm a little passionate about it and that's because I've had bad experiences in the past. When I was 18 and I started nannying, I was a completely different person. I was much more impressionable and you know, I was younger, didn't know as much. And I got very quickly involved in a relationship with the woman I work for now. And back in the day, I we, we've we never been on bad terms. She knows everything I'm saying in this video, so it's not like stuff's coming out. But we got close very quickly and it caused a lot of tension at times in her life because of choices she was making that she was dragging me into. And you shouldn't be dragged into any situation as a nanny because at the end of the day, you're there for the kid, not the parents. Again, obviously I've worked for her for three and a half years, so we're very close and I would never be that close to another family again. Not because I regret our relationship, just because I think that you do need to have healthy boundaries. Um, the family that I work for now, I work for the woman I just talked about at night and then I work for the another family in DC. The family that I work for in DC, we are very close. I did build a bond with them, but at the end of the day, we're there for the kid. I'm not like, you know, I'm not going on vacation with them for no reason, that type of thing. Like if we're on vacation, it's because I'm watching the baby type of thing. So again, make your kid, the kids the first priority. I would love for you guys to all find families that you love to work for because at the end of the day, you are spending a lot of time with them. There's nothing wrong with gossiping around the table, but I'm just saying, don't make that your first priority. Making your expectations clear is the number one thing that'll help you make those boundaries. The last family I worked for, I told them, you know, I would happily help clean bottles, do all the things, and I that that was kind of taken with and run, and they, they take they took that information and ran with it, and I ended up like scrubbing their all of their bathrooms and not just the kids' bathrooms, or doing everybody's dishes, stuff like that doing everybody's laundry. If that's something that you put forth in your contract that you're gonna help with everybody's laundry, then that's different, but that was not what happened. It was just put upon me. So yeah, be clear with your expectations and what you want out of it. So as for taxes and all that stuff, I can't speak on that. Um, I'm just not someone who like, it's not that I'm scared to tell you any of that. It's just that I'm not an authority on that. If you are a nanny or a baby, Babysitters often get paid through Venmo. It's not taxed. That's not a bad thing. Like it's like pocket change for kids. Like that's just how it is. Um, it's not illegal, nothing like that. But if you are a nanny, that is a bit of a blurred line. Some people aren't paid, you know, aren't taxed and they're paid under the table and others are taxed with benefits, paid time off, all that. That especially comes into play with when you're a live-in nanny. Again, I've never been in that situation, so I don't know. I can only speak on what I know. But be transparent, just say, I've never dealt with my own taxes, social security, all that. But if you want to, you know, deal with it for me, I will happily oblige. I did work with a family that was in the government system for a while. And, you know, that is something that they have to, you know, they have to declare. So just be transparent, know your family, know what they need and everything should be fine. But I, when I was taxed as a nanny, I told them, I don't know what I'm doing. Like you need to do it for me or show me how to do it. And they were perfectly happy doing it for me. I also had a family that I interviewed with, didn't end up taking the job that thought that I was going to do all that stuff. And I don't know how, um, it's also not the nanny's job. It is your employer's job to do that for you. So yeah, I hope this gave you a better idea on what the differences are and things you can expect. 
and all that stuff. If you have any questions or have any other videos you want to see, leave them down below and I will try to get to them. Um, I'm happy to expound further upon this topic or any other topic you guys want to see. So yeah, let me know in the comments and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye. <laughs>